Namaste. Welcome to another edition of Instagram Live. This edition is actually really special because we're broadcasting in a time so we can reach all those amazing people out in Asia. Hi to everybody. Thank you so much for joining for the first time at an hourly time where really we have the feeling we can be better here for you. So what are we going to do today? We're going to talk about these amazing reflectors, right? Lightbridge precision reflectors. What is this? That's actually something that's going to give you a better quality of natural light. It's going to help you save time on set with a nicer workflow at the same time. And that's the most amazing part. It's actually going to help you save money at the end of the day. So a lot of talk. We're really here to do this live. So this is not a sales pitch. We're actually going to run through the full thing. My name is Jacob Ballinger, a former gaffer, founder of the Lightbridge. We're here today with Laszlo, also founder of the company at Gaffer. And Rochelle is helping us today as a model. So we actually have a great face to look at. So you don't have to look at me all the time. Okay, I think we should get this right away started. CRLS reflectors, precision reflectors. They come with a rail in different sizes, right? So they come from really small by seven by seven centimeters all the way up to one by one meter close to four by four feet. So you have the full range of five different sizes of reflectors. We're going to be looking at this. At the same time, you've got the full range of diffusion reflectors because this is the most amazing thing about these reflectors. They're going to give you controlled diffused light without spill. And that's what we're going to have a look at in a second as well. So what we're going to do now is with a face, look at Rochelle's face to really look at the different levels of diffusion, what you can achieve with it. Just a basic heads up. We're not going to go into all the details today is every reflector up to 50 by 50 centimeter, this size has a rail at the back and it has an easy access point. Now we call this the C wheel. You open this up and you've got this uh, easy access point here. And you just basically click the, the C wheel in here, pull it back. Tighten it down a little bit and you're ready to go. This here is made for wind. You can rig this on cars. You can rig this on cranes. You can put them underwater. Just clean the surface at the end of the day. It is an optical system so you can pull off all the magic we have. And again, if any questions come up, please do ask. And at the same time, I'm really happy to welcome Masashiki on board. Masashiki is the business development manager for Asia. And he's also going to be there to help you with answering questions. And he's going to put his email address. So if you ever want to have a question, you want to talk with Masashika, wherever you are in Asia, he's going to be here for you and support you in the best possible way. Okay, enough that being said, let's get this thing started. Welcome, Rochelle. Have a seat. Feel comfortable. Let's get this going. So what we're going to look at first is I'm going to pan off the light. We don't need this right now. So, and we're going to start with diffusion zero. Diffusion zero, as you'll see in a second, is really hard, right? And it's really harsh too. So this is actually like a real mirror, but it is at the bottom range of the reflectors. Why do we do this? Because you want to have the full range from a real mirror all the way to super white. So here's one thing. I have a light at the bottom. It's an aperture 60 and I'm panning the reflector. And see what's happening when I start panning down the reflector? What happens is, is it actually doesn't look like I'm panning a light source, right? It more like looks like a light bulb that is swinging around. Now this is kind of amazing. And why is this like this? That the swinging, that it feels more like swinging and not like panning. Well, that's something I would like to point out over here. So what we have over here is the reflector, right? So just think about having your light source underneath. And if your light source is underneath and it's reflecting into the reflector and it's coming back, actually you're doubling your distance, right? So it feels more natural. That's the reason it feels like natural light. And at the same time, you see on the top, the green part. So this is our virtual light source. So just think about our light source being down here and it's going to come into the reflector and it's going to go back. Actually, it feels like the lights over here. So look what happens. I start to pan the reflector and see what's happening. Actually, I'm moving a light source. I'm virtually moving a light source. Just imagine that. You don't have to move a light anymore. You just have to pan a reflector. That's going to make you so much faster and going to make it so much easier. And that's the reason it feels like a paintbrush in your hand. When you start panning it around, you don't have the feeling I'm just panning around the light source. Actually, you're moving a light source. And that's the amazing thing. Let's have it at this one more time. Let's have a look at this because this really is at the basic what using reflectors is all about. So you see the hard cut in Rochelle's face? That's like a real mirror, right? So this effect, of course, will work with a mirror too. And I can pan it around. And I can make nice hard cuts and nice hard shadows, like with a real mirror, but it's much less weight and it can't shatter. Diffusion zero. What you can also see, sorry, Rochelle, I'm going to cover your face for a moment. You see the color codes here at the back. 
Let me see how I can do this like this. So this is gray, color code gray, diffusion number one, diffusion zero. So this is like the real mirror. Okay, let's move up the step and have a look at it now in different levels of diffusion. So we get a hang of this. So we looked at real mirror. Next one up is diffusion number one, color code black. This is still really punchy as you can see. And now remember the hard cut from the mirror. See how this is still a little bit harder, but it's a little bit softer to cut already. So just this nuance softer. I always say it's like Hampshire frost plus a real mirror. So this gives you the chance still having a really hard punchy light, good for redirecting light, good for hard, powerful sunlight coming in. But at the same time, if you say, oh, Jacob, I like this light, but it's too much in the face. No worries. I just pan down the reflector. That's all I need to do. It's in the face and I'm going to pan it down. And that's all we need to do. There we go. And it's out of the face. Just going to close a nice bounce coming back. I can say obviously more from the back. I can move it to the front and I can move it around again. And again, you have the feeling you're not panning a light source. You're actually moving it. So this is kind of incredible. Okay. From there, from diffusion number one, we're going to go to diffusion number two. Diffusion number two is really a workhorse reflector, color code blue. Diffusion number two, let's have a look at the cut again to get a good feeling for it. Still very punchy. And if you take this down, you see how soft the cut's getting? This becomes like totally beautiful. Rochelle, can you do me a favor? Can you lean back and sit up straight again? So now she's a little bit out of light and now you come into the light with your head. See how it feels like it's not, oh, she's coming into a light source. Actually, it feels like there's no light here and suddenly she's softly coming into a light. So that's really the beauty of using these reflectors. It doesn't feel like you're having a light source. It doesn't feel like it's sourcey. It feels much further away, but you see how close I actually am with the reflector. And again, by panning around, I can create any mood I want, right? Because light is all about moods. So by doing this nice little shifts and tilts, you actually get full control over it. So here's a crazy thing. Look at this reflector. I'm going to have it on her face and a little bit so you can see the surface as well. And if you look at the surface, what you can see is, can you see the surface, Leslie? Yeah. Um, the light's going in Rochelle's face, right? And it's soft light. Look at this. This is soft light. And if you look at the reflector, there's no light going in your direction. Just imagine that. This is the first industry, first reflector lighting system that gives you controlled diffused light, but no spill light. This is a spill light free reflector. I can pan this soft light around like nothing else. You would need frames, flags, whatever to give you this control of light. But now you don't, you just need one reflector from the light bridge and you pan it around and off you go and you're ready to be set and create any mood you want. And again, please, if you have any questions, just shout out right away. We're live here. We're here for you. That's our job to support you in the best possible way. Okay. This is diffusion two. Now it's going to get interesting. Now we're going to get softer. Now we're going to go to diffusion number three, color code violet. And you see how soft this already gets. And at the same time, I can pan this reflector down and I can pan it up. So I am still in control over my diffused light. I can pan it in all directions. It's spill light free and it can pan this around. This is high tech stuff. This means like driving a really fast racing car because suddenly it's not just a clumsy thing that you're reflecting some light off. And if you don't like it, you have to pan it off. This actually gives you the chance to take it into your hands, to paint your mood, your image, your, whatever you want to create. And at the same time, you don't want it on the face, just on the shoulder. No worries. I pan it down. And now when Rochelle comes in and out of the, uh, lean back again, come to the front, she's out of the light and now she's coming in. See how soft and beautiful this looks. So now we're already getting to the really soft levels of the light sources we have here, right? In different sizes from really small to big, really soft diffused light. So you can make anything you want from it. And now we're going to go to diffusion number four. Diffusion number four is called super white. This is the only reflector that already does not have an aluminum surface. This actually has a white surface. So this is already very close to what we know from our standard whites. The reason we did this is very simple. We want to give you a fast, easy workflow. If you say, Jacob, this is too soft. I need something harder. I just swap back to diffusion number three, right? And at the same time, we say diffusion number three is too hard. I just go to diffusion number four. You don't have to change the grip. This is a fast and easy workflow. 
So I'm just going to mount this here for a second. There we go. So, okay, now we got some beautiful light on Rochelle. Obviously, this is Instagram. This is with an iPad. So if you want to look at the quality of light, please do go to our YouTube channel and you'll see the good quality sources just in terms of seeing what the light actually does here, right? But at the same time, I'm panning it off. I'm panning it on, but now comes the trick. I'm going to take a small little reflector. I'm going to take this off for a second just to show. So I'm going to take a diffusion number two, 15 by 15 centimeters, and I'm going to add this into the diffusion number white. And here's the thing, and here where we talk about really quality of light, because this is like soft and it's all over the face, but let's say we want a little bit more punch on the blouse. I just take it in and suddenly I'm adding the punch of the light. Isn't that incredible? I don't need a second light source. I'm just going to add one reflector in and I'm going to get all the control I want. And this means no double shadows, of course. This means easy, fast setup, putting it on there. And suddenly you can create a quality of light, no matter if this is for, you know, for commercials, if this is for feature films, if this is for tabletop work, if it's for photography, this system really works for everything. And the same thing again, Rochelle, can you come, go out and come in again? There we go. Then we come out and now we're going to come in. See how it doesn't feel, oh, it's a light source. It just feels like one new, beautifully controlled light source, just the way it is right now. Well, that's amazing. That's the basics. Thank you, Rochelle. Perfect. We got number one. So just to sum this up again, we have a full range of diffusions from diffusion zero, a real mirror replacement, one, two, three, four, super white, really soft light that's coming in my face now. And of course you can combine the surfaces, use a diffusion three with a diffusion two, put two of them next to each other. So you can combine them. You can do creatively anything you want with them. This is your light. The reason we did this so simple. Uh, Laszlo, can you pan across to show the lighting setup? Perfect. So this really gives you a fast and easy setup. One light source down below, it's lighting into the 15 by 15. Now it's gonna go into the diffusion number four and that's all it needs basically. There we go. Timo, I see Timo is online. Timo, can you do me a huge favor? Could you please reach out? I've been trying to get in contact with you, but I haven't been able to. Uh, because I can't find your email address anymore. Can you please send it to jacob at thelightbridge.com? I, I have a thing I have to talk with you about. Thank you, team. We're an amazing team. We'll talk uh, DP. So uh, thanks for joining. It's a big honor. Okay, that being said, um, we have the setup. We had a look at it. We saw how simple it is. We see how we can easily light faces with this. Of course, you can use these reflectors with standard equipment. You can put a soft box here. You can say, I just want a soft wrap. I'm going to put a hard precision reflector in the middle, give you the control you want. So you've got all these options. So you combine them. This is not a one way standalone system. This is a tool. We developed it for 15 years on set to really get it to the point that it just works easy and flawlessly. That being said, we don't only light faces, we also light rooms. We have to see how this works efficiently for sets, for bigger setups. So we're going to do this now. But to actually show this to you really easy and simple, we're going to use our little demo box to actually show you how in a miniature set, how with a big setup, you actually could use this. Okay, let's get moving. So Lasso's going to move this out. I'm going to move this in here. Here comes the box. There we go, a little bit of light. I have to find my things down below. And you come up and now you're going to light in. See what happens? Just think about having a light source so close by the window. That would actually mean you would not get parallel shadows. This would actually mean this light would not, this has no fall off, right? So it doesn't feel like it's a sourcey light source, just the way it is. It actually feels like sunlight, right? So this natural light we were talking about, so simple set, set up because you keep your hard light down below, your heavy lights, you light up to your reflectors and boom, easy, nice rigging and off you go. So there's one other thing. You could say, Jacob, easy. I can put a crane really far away to get this effect. Yeah, of course. But by mounting a reflector so close, look what happens. I can pan this around in a room. I get full control of every position and the light feels really far away. And this is the incredible power of saying you want to create moods. Jacob, I love this. I will just want a table not on the wall. No worries. Here you go. A hard spell right over here or you can pan it back. 
So by having a reflector, your gear so close to set, your set stays free because you're lighting from outside, you can shoot in all directions, but at the same time, we're able to give you full control with diffusion zero. Now from here, we go to diffusion number one, color code black. It's already a little bit soft, but you can see it in the shadows of the chair, and I can pan this around and you're in control of punchy light with a little bit of softness all the way around the room. Look, I even can bounce off the ceiling if you want to, just like this. Easy. Panning it around again, nice and easy to go. From there we go to diffusion number two. For all you people out there that are rigging for cranes and doing heavy duty big shows, um, diffusion two is what we recommend to put on cranes and outside if the wind's going because you won't have the effect of a mirror, which is really important. Okay, here we go. So we pan around. I'm in control of soft light just by panning around. Isn't that incredible? You don't have to do anything just by panning it around. We're ready to go. Bam. And off we go. Diffusion number two. I don't, uh, Jacob, I love this not on the wall. No worries. I just pan it over. No flags, no extra frames. Super simple and easy. From there, we go to diffusion number three. Nice and soft. I am still in control of my soft light. Look at this. Look how soft this is. Look how the whole room is starting to light up. Again, this has everything to do with distance. It's not only about how far virtually your light sources away, it's also about how the light bounces in around in the room, how it creates a mood, how you can use this to have freedom for your directors, have freedom for yourself to find different camera positions to light, right? That's incredible. So from there we go to diffusion number four. Really great for moonlight, for example, or just for really an overcast day. Just look at this. This is like skyscraper, 10th floor, right? Now you say you're shooting in the cellar. No worries. Now you're shooting in the cellar. Just by panning around, you get full control. And again, just to show this to you, let's say this even could be a butterfly if you want. If you need a bigger source, you can use the reflector too. If you don't have any, if you have wind issues, for example, or you have to take care of rain, it's great to use the reflectors outside because you won't have the problems with, with cloth. But then you can say, hey, Jacob, I like this, but I need to add some more punch. Say, okay, that's great. We have our fill light. I'm just going to take a second reflector, add it in, and create a little punch. So I have fill light in the room, you know, fill light, and I'm going to add in a little bit of extra light to create your mood. No extra lights, no extra work need needed. Just rig your second reflector onto it, and you're ready to go. Great on small balconies, too. If you just imagine here being a balcony, how much distance you can create that you couldn't do that before. Well, that's the basics to this. But now you're going to say, Jacob, this is a small house. Let's, what does this actually look like in a room? Of course, we're going to look at this. So you're going to do this right now. Rochelle's going to go into the room, and we're going to have a look at the room itself. I'm going to put this away. There we go. I almost jinxed it. Okay, perfect. So we have a room lit here, right? You can go in. So I'll take out the chair. Perfect. So I'm just panning around. We have, of course, a great logo here. And this room really looks natural, right? So Rochelle's just going to walk over to the window for us, see that we get full freedom of the room. It feels like daylight. We have beautiful shadows. When she walks to the window, obviously we're on an iPad. I can to control the brightness here right now. Um, but the fall off is really minimal. So if you walk back again, there we go. Whole room is free. So how is the setup here? It's actually really simple. So I'm going to follow Rochelle over and then I'm going to look outside of the window. So give us a nice little impression of what our little studio looks like here. We got a light source down below. We got a C100 reflector up here. Last one, can you go there and pan around a little bit? That would be awesome. So there we go. So last one's just going to pan around a little bit to show you what the room can do. We have a friction system in here, give you the full control of the light. And what I'm going to do here now is I am going to pan one extra light off that I want to show you later, just so we have a look at what's actually happening here. Okay, so this is just the light source coming in from outside right now. I'm going to show you again. This is Laszlo right here, panning around, light source down below. It's a Filex Q8 down there. There we go. And now the lights on Rochelle. And now Laszlo pans off the light completely. Boom. See how it doesn't feel like you're panning off a light, but you're moving a light and how you can create different kinds of moods by soft, small, subtle changes of the reflector. You can get any mood you want from this. This is a level of precision we're not used to with our standard gear in terms of 
how the whole room, how the whole mood changes, because virtually this light, right, doesn't feel like it's only a few meters away from the window. This feels like it's all the way in the back of the room. So it feels much more natural like this. So this is one thing, right? A great thing to do if you've got windows, if you've got small balconies and you don't have place, this is a great way so you can uh, create more distance from this. Okay, Rochelle, if you walk back again. So here, obviously our iPad is now jumping in exposure, but this is a little bit more dark here. So what we did here is, you know when you're shooting in a room and you're saying you like the light, but what happened is, is we need to extend the light in the room. Let's have a look at this by not using a standard Kino flow like we used to do in the old days, but actually adding a reflector. So Laszlo is going to be panning on a reflector. I'm going to show Laszlo over here with this Jolico. We have one for our logo and one that's going to be going onto the light source. So look what happens with the room. And lastly, can you pan it off completely? Boom. Okay, so it's really dark here now in the room. And now we're going to add it on. And you can see it on the floor as well. Yeah, full pan on. Boom. How suddenly the light comes back again. So again, please go to our YouTube site to really look at the quality of the light. This is an iPad. This is live. This is more for us to be able to communicate. But again, just to point this out, uh, Rochelle, can you walk to the window? So I'm going to see how she's not affected by the punch on the floor. That actually is the light source. I want to show you both of this. Okay, so she's standing there, right? We want to extend the window, which is just awesome because it actually means the light's coming from the outside. We actually say this is one light coming like this. So we need more bounce in the room. Where's the skylight coming in? So for example, this little spot on the floor here, this is the reflector from the top. This is a leco going into the reflector, putting us a punch down, but Rochelle is not affected by this light. Why? It is spill light free, diffused lighting. That means you can put a reflector up there, not do black wrap, not do frames, just push it up there, put the light down. You can combine it with the outside as well. Super easy fix to extend light in a room. Obviously you can use all different kinds of reflectors. We did a 50 by 50 diffusion too in here and out there, but again, you could swap to harder or softer. And that is basically what we do over here. Really nice, easy, and simple. Thank you, Rochelle. That's that. Um, so now we get to the point where if there's any questions, do please ask them now. Otherwise, thank you everybody for joining and uh, we'll be back next time and maybe we'll swap hours. Let's see how it goes in terms of, uh, in terms of all of you being able to join in at this time. So I'm going to be waiting a few minutes to see if any questions come in anything happens. I really hope you're working, you're enjoying your time on set, you're enjoying your time lighting. Uh, we're pushing our best over here to bring you the best, our, you know, our experience that we had on the set with our gear um, to your set and you can use it. I hope this demo helped you. Uh, do please reach out to Masashike for Asia. Uh, you can reach out directly to us here in the company as well, of course, and we'll divert it so we all have a chance to learn from each other because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Where should one start with learning about lighting as a beginner? Um, really simple. Take your iPhone, go outside, look, and try, you have to start to look at light first. So what you have to do at the beginning is you have to look for stuff you like. Oh, I like this image. I like this mood. Take a picture, analyze it. And then the best thing is not to start adding lights as a beginner, but take it away. Be in a room, say, okay, um, what happens if we close the curtains? What does it change? What happens if we turn on a light bulb or turn it off? So really start basic. I think the biggest mistake that happens in the beginning a lot of times is that people think, oh, I need lights first. Before you turn on any light, see what's available. And when you see what's available, then, and you don't like it, then start to adding. That's what I can answer to that. At the same time, I do want to point out one thing. Uh, if rental houses are watching, if people are watching that are starting to invest into the gear, it's a system that we've created really has all the advantages it does. But at the same time for rentals, it comes back to the point of saying, how is the repairs? How is it with scratches? How is it if people don't clean the reflectors? It's real simple. For all the rental houses, for everybody who's earning the money, for you know renting out gear, for earning the money with that, we have the rental support site. If you go to a website, www.thelightbridge.com, you have a support icon there, click it. And from there, you can log on to the rental support. The rental support site is only there for people that are renting equipment. You can get better price points on spare reflectors. You get help in how to repair the things. We're there for you all over the world. You contact us 
And we promise you from Monday to Thursday, uh, European time, 9 to 3 o'clock, we will answer you. We will be there for you, supporting you all the way uh, from somebody who has a vision to somebody who says, look, people want me to buy this, to rent it. We're there for you to help you and support you. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope this is helpful. Do reach out to us via Instagram. If you have ideas what we should be talking about on this Insta Lives, we do them once per month, usually third or fourth week of the month. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great shooting day.